Oh, you didn't know there was a whole Wikipedia article on Bell's Ball Gow? Yeah, me neither. And you didn't know it was conceived of by several drunk filmmakers? Amateur. Bell is the lead character in Disney's animated film, Beauty and the Beast. It was released in 1991 and based on the 1756 fairy tale of the same name, which was written by French author Jean-Marie Dupré Le Beaumont. The fairy tale was inspired by ancient Greek stories such as Cupid and Psyche and the Golden Ass, which I'm surprised isn't a Cardi B album. Beauty and the Beast was the third film in the Disney Renaissance era, after The Little Mermaid and The Rescuers Down Under. Maybe you've never noticed, but there's this big gap between the 60s and the 90s, separating the old Disney classics from the modern hits. That's because, as you may have guessed, Walt Disney died in 1966, which left the company creating a string of good, but never truly great films. That's not to say I don't love some of these films. I grew up on The Fox and the Hound, and when I showed this film to my girlfriend a few months ago, she cried like a baby in the scene where the grandma leaves Todd in the woods. I may have also cried a little bit too. Personally, I think the Renaissance era should have began five months before The Little Mermaid with Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. But I guess society has spoken. Anyway, Belle's ball gown is the clothing she wears in the movie's titular song. That's right, it's pronounced titular, meaning the song title is the same as the movie's. The dress is an opulent, off-the-shoulder ball gown with a voluminous skirt. If you're like me and you didn't know what the word opulent meant, it means rich, but not in the Cheesecake Factory kind of way. Or like in the, I just turned an online bookstore into a multinational technology company that's driving thousands of smaller companies out of business, even though Walmart literally just did this during the 80s and 90s, but then I did it in the 2000s and made so much money that I can swing elections, but hey, at least you can order an electronic toothbrush and it'll arrive to your door within two days. Kind of way. The art director of Beauty and the Beast, Brian McEntee, always envisioned the dress as yellow and gold as seen in the film to represent Belle's growth into a warmer and happier character. The Disney's marketing department, however, wanted a pink dress to appeal to young girls. Even though we'd already seen a pink dress in Aurora, who also had a movie with Beauty in the name, as well as Ariel just two years prior. Luckily, that's the exact point that McEntee made, which led to the iconic dress that we know today. Since then, the dress has been reimagined in many different ways, with different iterations being used in the live Broadway musical, 2017's live-action Beauty and the Beast starring Emma Watson, and most recently by her, which we'll get to in a little bit. Many speculate that the dress's popularity was due to how much of a hit the title song was, not to mention it matches the ballroom the song takes place in. Fun fact, one of the screenwriters theorized that Belle got the dress from the wardrobe because she was no longer able to use the gown after being turned into a piece of furniture, which makes sense. Kinda weird when you start comparing her old human self to her current furniture self because of how easy it is to get inside of her. A fashion historian from Glamour magazine said the dress wasn't historically accurate because it borrows from different designs in different eras. Guess that's why that magazine isn't around anymore. As well as the fact that it doesn't include a wig or a hat, which would indicate the character's... Um, how do I put this delicately? Availability. Like in a lovely ladies kind of way. Some people suspect the gown was inspired by Audrey Hepburn's dress in Roman Holiday. But as is tradition, Disney neither confirmed nor denied that this was true. Now since The Little Mermaid was so popular, Disney suddenly realized, oh wow, we have a chance to make a lot of money off of princess stories. So suddenly historical accuracy didn't matter so much. And the time, effort, and money saved by simplifying her dress has now influenced the fashion sense of multiple generations. McEntee recalled that several filmmakers designed the dress while eating pizza and drinking alcohol, and found it ironic that for many years to come, young girls would be wearing a dress essentially designed by drunken men. The musical adaptation became a real project, because the costume designer wanted to remain true to the original colors and a similar design. The dress ended up weighing over 30 pounds, that's roughly 15 kilos for the rest of the world, and included a hoop skirt, beading, flowers, bows, lace, ribbons, and a brocade. I don't know what a brocade is, so I'm going to assume it's a male-oriented arcade, which also just describes an arcade. The dress was so heavy that it would pull Susan Egan, the actress who originally played Belle on Broadway, in the opposite direction of wherever she was dancing, which, due to how bad so many boys are at dancing, I would guess is a fairly common experience. And once the ballroom scene was complete, the dress would have to be removed by three stagehands, who would use wires to hoist the dress up into the rafters backstage, where it would remain between performances. Kind of like a ball gown version of Phantom of the Opera. Belle's gown was the first costume complete for the show, because Disney wanted photo shoots and marketing complete six months ahead of rehearsals, meaning that Susan had to be ready to go several months before her castmates. The next notable Belle was Emma Watson in 2017's live-action Beauty and the Beast. The costume designer said the ball gown was difficult to adapt because of the popularity of the original animated version. 
They didn't intend to create an exact replica of the original, which you can sort of see if you look side by side at photos of Emma Watson in a dress similar to the animated film, and then compare that with the final version in the movie. Evidently, Emma Watson actually had a say in the creative direction of the dress, saying that she did not want a big princess dress or a corset because she was worried that it would restrict her movement. She stated that she wanted the garment to feel like it could float or like it could fly. I guess she should have just used Wingardium Leviosa. Come on, you knew I had to make a Harry Potter joke at some point. The dress took over 12,000 hours to design and create, and had over 2,000 crystals sewed into it for additional sparkle. Which is the sort of thing that might be why people say media contributes to unrealistic standards. They then took this even further by taking those 2,000 crystals and adding 2,000 likes on top of them. Which I would love to see on this video considering how young the channel is. But if that doesn't happen, that's also fine because it means not many people watch me make that joke, and the embarrassment is kept to a minimum. The most recent iteration of Belle's gown was worn by her. If you don't know who this is, that's actually her artist's name. Her. For the 30th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast, she performed the title song alongside Josh Groban, who played the Beast. I didn't even know this happened. Apparently it's on Disney+. Plus. I'm gonna have to watch this because she's got like a business suit version of the gown, but then switches to the classic version, but then comes out with John Lennon glasses and a Beauty and the Beast guitar. I'm sold. That's all I need. Of course, every redesign comes with mixed reviews. People can never really separate their attachment and nostalgia to an original, unless it's Resident Evil 4. Many critics said they loved the changes made to Watson's version of the dress, but there was one critic who dismissed her version as a limp piece of margarine. For anyone who doesn't know what margarine is, it's basically a butter substitute made from vegetable oil. And apart from the fact that margarine can't really be limp, is this the dress you're talking about? That's like if you said the Beast outfit was a sad melting candle. Except that would actually make sense because the floofies look like melted candle wax. So I don't think critics should exist. And that's where I'm ending the video.